It's still saying declined. folks so uh um we'll try here one more time um don't have a ton of faith here but we're gonna try one more time and uh well, this way here Let's see if this works you turn it on there Mm -hmm. Wi-Fi. Try it that way. There we are. Connecting. On, sir? Sorry about that. That's all right, man. No worries. We haven't had a smooth start to this one single time yet. So, really, we're we're right on par. Yeah, for it should be. My phone just wasn't agreeing. Not one bit. <laughs> So, well, well, sorry about that. No problem at all, man. No problem at all. Um, but again, man, welcome. We are here with uh, with James Bell, um, movie director. Um, very, very interesting stuff that he has out there. I got to uh, watch one of your films here, uh, here very, very, very recently, um, Tantrums. And uh, wow, wow, it's uh, it is it is an impressive work of art. Um, it's it's different. It's not for the faint of heart at all. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but awesome, awesome movie, man. So you are, um, director, actor, special effects artist out of Michigan, um, owns very fine crap videos. Um, some of your best known works are the bliss and tantrums, which I got to experience today. Um, I think that's the best way to describe tantrums. Would you say so? That's an experience. It's not something you just watch. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, uh, not not very linear like most most movies are. Like it's kinda like its own thing. Yes. Very much so. Um and again, like we said, these videos aren't for the faint of heart, but um if <laughs> if you're feeling brave and you're feeling up to it, so a little bit about myself. I've watched um some really messed up stuff. I've been a part of some really messed up stuff. Uh, Human Centipede, I've watched the, the second one, the third one, got through them with no problem. Um, your film gave me a couple moments where I had to, <laughs> uh, um, so that was, I was very impressed with that. Um, but again, just a little warning for anybody that's like gonna go out there and think they're gonna have a, a, a James Bell marathon tonight, um, be forewarned. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's good, but there's some, there's some moments that are a little rough with it. Um, so enough of me. All, all my stuff kind of kind of has that going on with it too. Like uh, probably the only one that really doesn't doesn't go too far is uh, Lucifer's Cosmonauts. That one's just kind of more like a goofy like alien movie. But the rest of them like well, that even has like I I get ass raped by a tentacle in that one, but. <laughs> Other than that, it's pretty tame. <laughs> um, all right, man. So, so tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Um, um, some of the movies that you've done, um, you know, just what what got you into this? Um, I've always wanted to make movies, and me and my friend used to like 
do like special effects and stuff like that when we were growing up, but we didn't have like cameras or anything. So it was all just kind of a waste. And uh, we always talked about just like shooting movies, just a couple of people and not really needing anybody else. And I don't know, it's just something I, I made my first movie that it's kind of like a documentary gone wrong. And uh, I got really lucky. It was kind of successful. And so I was able to just build off that, just be able to actually start making, like, little independent movies, like, just by myself and do, like, the distribution for them, too. And it just kind of started as something small and just kind of snowballed and stuff. Same with, like, the effects and stuff, like, I was doing really basic stuff in the beginning, and then, like, now I'm, I'm doing pretty elaborate things and working with, like, animatronics and stuff like that. So it's no, doing well, more advanced cool. stuff. Because cool. even in Tantrum, like, the effects that you've seen in that, that was, like, some pretty primitive stuff compared to what I'm doing now. Okay. All right. Um. So there's another movie out there that we uh, that we haven't even touched on yet, and uh, I'm I'm really intrigued by this one. So um, in Gay for Prey, um, Jesus is uh, stripped of his powers, kicked out of heaven for being a homosexual, and after a breakdown, he receives some help from some very unconventional characters. Um, you yourself had a role um, as one of those characters. Uh, would you be willing to tell us a little bit about it? Um. It was just a really small role, to be honest. It was like, uh, I, there's like a, a pornographic scene at the beginning of the movie, and uh, they needed somebody who wouldn't care about whipping out their dick, and <laughs> I don't care about whipping out my dick, so I just, I just filled in the role. It was like a five-minute shoot. I really, like, I don't know, it, I, I really wasn't involved too much with that production. Like, I had a lot going on in my life when that was going on. Like, I was just there for, like, two days, and that was that. Okay. Cool. Still, I mean, that, <laughs> that's just a, it's a really, really different premise um, for, for a movie. Um, it's a yeah, super yeah, different thing. People really like that film and stuff. Like, I don't know. It's, it's pretty popular for, like, a horror comedy type movie. It's not really a horror movie, though, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so, uh, so talking about that just a little bit more, um, the comedy hits all the touchy subjects, um, brings forth the hilarity of all the different radical groups involved. Um, in all comedy and um, really, honestly, in, in, in horror as well, um, whether it's strong subject matter or not, you'll have those prudish public opinions running rampant in one aspect or another. I'm sure you have dealt with this uh, a little bit. Um, what would you say regarding some of the banter that people have about uh, about movies like this and um, and what they say about the people that go out and enjoy stuff like this? I don't know. Like, uh, negative publicity is actually pretty good for any movie. It's going to promote it probably because that's really what sold my first movie was just – a lot of people really hated it and just told their friends not to buy it, that they hated it. And I don't know if people are like, fuck my friends and bought the movie. I don't, I don't, I don't really understand it. But cool. I don't know. Like, people being negative about like films and stuff. I, I don't know. I guess it just depends where you're at in your career and where you're at in your life, how much you really give a shit about what people have to say and shit. So I don't know. I don't pay much attention anymore. I've heard everything at this point. So I don't know. <laughs> heard. Heard. I don't give a shit. That's, that's a good answer. Uh, it's a good spot to be at too, to where you can, um, especially with, with some of the stuff you're doing to just not give a fuck. As to what anybody else has yeah. to say, man, that's a beautiful spot to be in with your life, man. <clears throat> All right. Um, so 
a little bit about your video, The Bliss. Um, so it's uh, old school, blood and gore to the fullest. Um, Bliss is loaded with it. Um, the special effects in The Bliss are very intriguing. You've touched a little bit already on stuff like that, but how long does it take um, to make an effect of the magnitude that goes into the production of something like The Bliss? Oh, not very long, to be honest. Like, pretty much I know what I'm making before I start making it. So, I don't know. In The Bliss, a lot of it wasn't, there wasn't anything really too over the top, but it was, like, enough. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. Probably each effect, though, like, to set it up and stuff, probably by an hour, hour to two hours. But in the one I'm doing now, like, the effects are a lot more elaborate. Like, we just did a reshoot of the scene. And probably, I don't know, we probably worked about 16 hours. And it's just really just a series of special effects that happened. But it just took that long to shoot it. So. Very cool. So are you, <laughs> are you self-taught with this stuff? Or, um, or is there yes. schooling or an accredit for the pursuit of, of what you've came to be able to do? No, I just kind of figured it all out. Like, I don't know. I worked in, like, a, a shop that had, like, a plastic injection molding machine. And I learned a lot by staring at that. And then I bought some silicone products. And by staring at those, I don't know. I just kind of put two and two together and figured out how they do everything. Cool. Very cool. Um, all right, so this yeah, is I was doing of stuff with like latex and like makeups before that, so like I didn't jump right into like the silicones and molding and stuff like that right away. I, I was doing other stuff for a long time before, okay? So sorry to cut you off. I was just... oh, no, no, you're fine, man. Absolutely, you cut me <laughs> off whenever you want. Absolutely, that's no problem at all. Um, but this, <clears throat> this is I, as so. I was watching, as I said, I watched Tantrums today. Um, it was my first time getting to be able to sit down and watch it. And number one, I have to applaud you for the first time in a very long time. Um, a movie put me in a position where I have to admit, it makes me a little sad to admit, but I had to turn away for half a second. Um, the, the genital mutilation scene, you got me. You got me for a second. I had to, I had to turn away from that for just a moment. Um, so uh, tell me a little bit about tantrums exactly. Like what, what is going on um, as much as you're willing to kind of dive into what the semblance of the storyline may have been or, or what exactly, uh, <laughs> what exactly was going on. And by the way, the crossing, and I don't want to give it away because the ending of this movie is phenomenal. <laughs> it's um, and well done. Um, but the, also the crossing that you had in the bathroom was insane. <laughs> that was something else. Yeah, a lot of tantrum is uh, just like it has like a kind of like a simple story. Like a guy kills himself and then it just starts flashing back and forth between like his like afterlife which I don't know for a while which it's kind of like changed you used to, like, have, like, a theory that when you died, you started, like, dreaming, like, after death. That, that really just, like, the subconscious just turned into, like, an internal dream. And then, like, his dreams is kind of, like, more like a nightmare to some people. But to him, it's, it's a perfectly fine dream. But uh, then it starts, like, having parts where, like, kind of like the dimensions are like intersecting with each other where you don't know which which dimension you're really in like when he's like spitting up like the slugs and stuff like that and then there's like a lot of stuff too that I added in it's just like my own like personal belief like my hatred for like organized religion and 
the United States in general. So the, the hatred of the did come from uh, the right. right. <laughs> did you pick up on that part. Um, that, that was, and, and even the way that you did it. So not, I, I don't even know for sure that it was intentional or not, but you're going through this movie and it's, it's, it's 35 minutes. And really honestly, other than not say the first minute of the movie, it's intense scene after scene, after scene, after scene, after scene. And so you get through that. And then almost at this halfway point, you come across this jogger scene and you know something bad's going to happen to the jogger eventually because she's in this movie and nothing good's happened to anybody so far. Um, but it almost gives you a moment of rest from all of it. And it's just this little 30, 40 seconds or so where all of that's kind of taken away before you jump back into it. And it's, it's a nice pause and it's beautifully done the way you just have everything flowing with the movie. Um, I just wanted to try to get a little more insight into it, man. And I, I appreciate it. It's, I'm very interested to see what you do with tantrums too. Um, that, that's in the works, correct? Oh, that's, that's been done and released like over a year ago. Okay. All right. So yeah. right, we're still going to That one also has another name, uh, Phantom of the Demon. I just put the tantrum two name on it just because it, it was pretty much like a tantrum film and things that were going on at the time period were kind of kind of like an echoing effect of Tantrum 2. Okay. Also, not 2, also. So, like, it, it in its own way, like, Fam of the Demons nowhere near as good as Tantrum is, but it, it kind of fits in with, like, the whole it's because like in that one it's like a female who uh is almost sexually assaulted or is sexually assaulted in the graveyard but then she bites off the genitalia of the person and uh shoves it up in her pussy and then that starts to fester and rot and she gets a horrible <laughs> infection which starts causing her to go through all kinds of things and so, yeah, that's what that movie's about. So it kind of fits in with, like, the same thing. So it has, like, the weird flashing with the mask and stuff. But just with things that were going on, I don't know. It, it just, just, they can't all be humdingers, I guess. <laughs> um, so out of all the movies that you've done, man, what's the one that you look back on and you're like, that is, that's, that's my favorite one. That, that's the best one I did. Currently, Nutsack, like, okay. uh, the film I did called Nutsack, that one was really good. Uh, just just everything that was going on during the production of it, too, like, was really special. So, I don't know. There's, there's just a lot of aspects to that, making that movie that were, like, really fun. I wrote it a long time ago, too. I wrote that, the the idea for that film probably like when I was like 16. So it's like a way simplified version of what the movie is supposed to be, but it's still a good representation of it. So I was just happy to get to finally make it. Cool. Very cool. Um, hey, your attention to detail with your, uh, prosthetics is, uh, it's really something cool. Um, is there a lot of research that goes into anatomy? I mean, do you look at, you know, kind of how exactly a, a skull would necessarily react to getting smashed in with a hammer and, and everything like that? Or, or is it more just kind of, kind of just go with what really. it looks right? I, I've just, I've seen a shitload of shockumentary videos, but other than that, yeah, I just kind of just try to make things look gross. I, I don't care if it's really medically accurate or anything. Like, cool. I'm far from a doctor, so <laughs> I don't know. I just try to make it look gross. Okay, you did a good job. Yeah, yeah. There, there. There's a couple gross scenes that I've seen so far. Um, so we've already given a little preview to our honeymooners. Um, a small sneak peek to your face lamp um, via a, a oh. video thread that we shared from the new film, The Bleak. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what we can expect to see in the bleak, or is that one 
also already out? <laughs> oh, it's not done yet. Okay. <clears throat> I'm still filming that. Um, <clears throat> oh, sorry, these get up on me sometimes. Um, oh, in the bleak, uh, yeah, that one's going to be pretty much, that one's going to be like my first one that's like feature length film. Like it's going to be like a full like hour, hour and a half film. Huh. And that's pretty much like, it's going to, uh, trying to think of how to say it without giving too much away, really. It's pretty much just nonstop gore the whole time, just gore and violence, but it it's not boring. Like, everything just keeps changing. Like, you, you won't be comfortable the whole time watching the film because, like, it just keeps on turning into something else and you won't even realize you're watching the same film that you put on by the end. So hopefully that's the intention to drive people um, a little batty while watching it. All right. Well, we're, uh, we're definitely planning on trying to see that one as soon as it comes out, man. I've, uh, you've really sparked my interest. Yeah, I should have that, uh, should have that ready by April. Because I, I plan on having copies available at uh, Cinema Wasteland. Okay. This one coming up in April, so. Okay. Shouldn't be All too right. long. I work pretty fast once I get going. Okay. Cool. Well, you heard it right there, guys. April. April. We will have the. He'll hopefully have the Bleak Ripper on ready to roll for you. Um. All right. So we're gonna um start kind of wrapping things up here a little bit, but we always like the opportunity. Um, for our guests to have the floor um, to just kind of share anything that they'd like to with our Haunted Honeymooners community. Um, we're an ever-growing family, man. Uh, we uh, just recently climbed over 1,600 different followers and uh, growing daily, man. So uh, trying to always get out there. But you got their attention for now, man. If there's anything you can say to them, the floor is yours for a few seconds, man. Um, geez, I don't know. Uh... <laughs> Go to the Very Fine Crap Video Store MD page and buy, buy some shit. Yes, There's go buy some shit. And, uh, special effects props available. Cool. Nice. Very cool. And we might uh we might be looking forward to maybe talking to you in the future about maybe seeing if we could have you build something for our set and um and making oh, a prop yeah, for us and everything like that, man. So all right. Well guys, that's gonna wrap it up with uh with Mr. James Bell. Um, again, man, we thank you so much, so much, so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day. Come and talk to us, man. Come and be a part of our little community for half a second. <clears throat> we really, really appreciate it, man. Um, check out the bleak as soon as it comes out and go, go look up his films. Maybe don't eat dinner right before you go watch tantrums, but go watch tantrums. Go watch it. Go find it out there. It's out there on the internet. You'll find it. Mr. Bell, you have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much, man. You too. All right, thank you. Bye.